Putting God first can be difficult. What can we learn from Solomon, who refused to put God first? Everything started well for Solomon. The weight of the crown led him to ask for wisdom, the one thing he needed most. His request was fulfilled, and God also blessed Solomon's reign with wealth, health, and prosperity. In time, however, Solomon's wisdom turned into rationalization. He used his intelligence to rationalize why he broke many of God's established laws. Solomon used forced labor to build the house of the Lord, as that must have seemed more efficient. Solomon married princesses from many other nations so that he could forge peace treaties with his enemies. Solomon built altars to his wives' gods as a way of welcoming them into his kingdom. Solomon built his palace to be three times larger than the temple to accommodate his large household. God has given the laws that lead to long-term prosperity and peace, but Solomon used his intellect to bend them according to his pleasure. Solomon did not put God first, and Israel was divided into two kingdoms within months of his death. Today, highly intelligent people are still rationalizing the breaking of God's law and other of God's requirements, like tithing, for instance. Putting God first means taking His word seriously in all aspects and following it. The simplicity of a child following a loving parent's instructions is perhaps the best antidote to our own demise. God stands ready to open the doors to health, wealth, and prosperity to many of us, according to His plans for our lives. Sometimes God keeps a door shut because our faith and future would be compromised if we were to walk through it. God's faithfulness evokes our response as stewards. If we are faithful with the small things, God will put us in charge of greater things. Solomon refused to put God first. The consequences were terrible for him and the people around him. God's love compels us to put his kingdom first, while Solomon's example is a warning for us today.